LTX Video has some updates you may be interested in if you like super fast AI video generation on your own home computer. Oh, and when I say fast, I mean like in under 15 seconds for 97 frames. It's best used in comfy UI and there are a range of model sizes available, though as always, the more VRAM you have, the better. All examples shown are machine generated by the LTXV model, which can do image to video or text to video as well. It's even got keyframes too, so you can pick a start, middle and end. You've seen what it can do, now let's take a look at how you can get things set up in your comfy UI. First up, one big change, even if you've used LTX video before. This note here, from now on, all our 8-bit quantized models are running natively in Comfy UI. Still, with our Q8 patcher node, you will get the best inference speed. If you look at the files over on their Hugging Face site, you'll see a bunch of files have been added recently. Most of them are the distilled versions, which we're focusing on in the video today. But just above that, there's this one here as well, which isn't a distilled version, as they've replaced a previous FP8 file. So while the Q8 patcher is now optional if you use the new files, you will get about twice the performance if you do use it. As always, make sure you're using a current version of Comfy UI, and you can see there on the screen the version I'm using. Next up, you'll need to install a few custom nodes, the first of which is Comfy UI Video Helper Suite. You'll also need Comfy UI KJ Nodes, Comfy UI LTX Video, and finally Comfy UI Image Filters. Unfortunately, this one doesn't appear in Manager, so you will need to git clone that manually. Pop over to the green code button. Click the copy and paste, and then run the git clone command inside your custom nodes directory. I already had the requirements installed, but if you're a portable user on Windows, there are a couple of .bat files there you could try as well. At this point, you've got a couple of options to GGUF or not to GGUF. I tested both the FP8 and Q8 distilled models, with the VRAM usage and outputs being fairly similar in each case. The main difference, however, is the performance and, of course, the size of the GGUF file. The FP8 model is almost 16 gig in size, but it is twice as fast as the Q8 when used with the Q8 node. The GGUFs, on the other hand, go down to as little as 6 gig in size. Of course, the smaller the model, the lower the quality will be. Big and fast or small and slow, pick whichever model fits best into your VRAM. If you are using the GGUF files, don't forget to install the ComfyUI GGUF custom nodes as well. For the full FP8 performance, however, you're going to need their Q8 kernels. These are fully optional, as it will work without them, just not at the full speed. Additionally, this isn't a custom node, but it is something you'll need to install into your comfy environment. And this is where things got fun. Well, fun as in it didn't work for me later on. If you've got a newer card, such as a 4090 or a 5090, then chances are everything will be fine and you can just move on to downloading the checkpoint after you've installed this. However, with older cards, such as the 3090 that I've got, the issue you're likely going to face is number one here, unbound local error cannot access local variable self underscore attention function. And this is true because it hasn't been set. Does this mean we're doomed? Does it only work with more modern NVIDIA cards? No, it means we just have to set the variable and then also mess around a bit with the Q8 linear class because that didn't work either. Time for a lesson then on weights and biases. I hope you've got a pen and paper ready. No, only joking. So you don't have to spend half the night rolling your face across the keyboard like I did. I've already uploaded a fork which has the various changes I made in order to get it working. Thus, if you have an Ampere card and you're getting that error, then try my fork and maybe it will work. It's exactly the same instructions, whatever thing you're using. Of course, I'm using Linux, but the thing you need to replace is this one here. So rather than their URL, just do that copy and paste thing again so you get the new URL of this repository instead. First of all, make sure you've got the CUDA toolkit installed. I've had that installed for ages. And then you just run these commands in your Comfy UI Python environment. So in my case, that would be conda activate Comfy UI. 
They've got a line there to install PyTorch, but hopefully you should already have that if it's running in your comfy UI environment. Uh, a couple of other packages there, and then the pip install. So as mentioned, that should be absolutely fine if you're running a 4090 or a 5090, but try replacing that URL with my one instead if you're having problems on an Ampere series card. As well as those custom nodes you've now got installed, you'll also need to download various files, the first of which being a couple of upscalers. So download those if you don't have them already into your ComfyUI models upscale models directory. If you don't have the T5 as yet, you'll need to download that as well. And that goes into ComfyUI models text underscore encoders. All of their model files also have licenses which aren't fully free, so do be sure to have a read through those. As far as I can tell, I'm good to go with the YouTube video, but if you're a big business, then you'll likely need a special license. Now comes decision time. Do you have enough VRAM? If you're like me and you've got something like a 3090, which has 24 gig, then you'll be okay with the distilled FP8. That one you download to your ComfyUI models checkpoints directory and it has the VAE baked in, so that's the only file you need. If you're downloading a GGUF, that will go into your diffusion models directory, plus you'll need to grab the VAE as well because unlike with the checkpoint, that isn't baked in. There's also another example workflow there based on the official example workflow. Now that you've got everything you need to run their example workflows, let's dive in. There are three main ones for the distilled model, which is the focus of today's video because it's the super fast version. You can do image to video, image to video with keyframes or image to video with duration extension. The image to video workflow you can also use for text to video as well. So let's start off with that one. Right, this is their image to video workflow example, but with a few little tweaks. First up, all you need to do in order to make the image to video workflow into a text to video workflow is bypass that load image input. Control B does that if you like keyboard inputs. And there you go, well done. You now have a text to image workflow. My amazing Patreons get these pre-modified workflows as they keep the channel going for everyone. But if you want to update the free example workflows yourself, here's what you'll need to do. The first optional change depends on your choice of files from earlier and if you installed the Q8 kernel. If you didn't install the Q8 kernel, then the LTX Q8 patch isn't going to do you any good. So just delete that. The next optional change is for GGUF file users, as instead of the load checkpoint node, you'll want to use both the GGFU net loader and the VAE loader as well. You won't have these handy reroutes available, so before you delete your load checkpoint node, it's best to create them. You can just drag that out and then select reroute. Also, if you right click, you can go to properties, show output text, make that true, and then you'll get the text on it as well. In order to see what you need to connect your reroute to, you'll just click on your load checkpoint node. Obviously, I've done it already here, but there you can see all the white lines going out. So just connect your reroute into the model, model, and the same with the VAE. Once you're done, if you're GGUF only, your load checkpoint node won't have any connections then, and you can just delete it. As noted earlier, the Q8 patch is the fastest version. I ran tests with the patch, without the patch, and with the Q8 files. The results summary you can see in this note. In essence, the Q8 patch is about twice as fast as the GGUF version, which is the slowest. Without the Q8 patch, the FP8 is still faster, but not by very much. For prompting, it's best to be descriptive, and the first example is for a rodent wizard slamming his flaming wooden staff down on the ground. The first thing it does is the base low res generation. Lots of settings here you'll probably not want to touch at all, such as the sigmas and the guider, but things like the seed, width and height, frames and crop settings you may wish to modify. CRF and blur, like it says in the notes, are for image inputs, helping to make those a bit more like video frames. Few of the other samplers even work, so sticking with the default is a good idea. 
After that, it does some upscaling. This part takes a lot longer, so I suggest bypassing these two groups until you've got a decent preview. For me, this took one minute and 15 seconds. Again, not much you'd want to change in the sampler, apart from perhaps the crop. I think the video upscales nicely, as you can see there with the final generation. Now, all of their examples on the GitHub page were realistic looking, so how about some different styles? Can it even handle those? Uh, here, I'm gonna prompt for a cartoon style, so how well do you think this will go? And as you can possibly tell from my voice, uh, not as impressed with the cartoon style. The low res preview there being uh, a little bit of a mess with the fingers. And of course, if the low res preview isn't quite as good, then, well, the upscale isn't going to be much better either. How about a claymation style instead then? Here I'm prompting for that style with some figures made out of clay. The result in this case I didn't think was as bad in that they do sort of look like clay figures, I guess. It's a slightly different style anyway. If you wanted to use a different resolution, then beware. It may not follow your prompt quite as well. This is the prompt I'm using to get a cinematic sci-fi clip of a cyborg woman and a rodent video on a view screen. Unfortunately, in this case, the result is pretty bad. The main problem here being I've switched the width and height around to make it more of a TikTok format video. And that really hasn't gone quite as well, has it? Going back to 768 by 512 with the same prompt and seed generates a much better output. Mmm, delicious cheese. This doesn't mean you can't do other resolutions though, as image to image can help a bit. This time the load image node isn't bypassed and I've got a picture of the rodent wizard I have in mind. The prompt is fairly descriptive, meaning hopefully I'll get a decent result. This time I'm using 768 by 768, so a square image, and with the input as a reference, I think it's done pretty well. I find you may need to play around a bit with the seed before you do get a decent result, but as it's less than 15 seconds to try again, that isn't too bad. The upscaled version looks crisp and clean, so yeah, looking good. Ooh, yeah, rodent magic. For the keyframe example workflow, they have three inputs, a start, a middle, and an end. Now, of course, you can use however many you like. You could just have a start and an end, but they've got three in their example. Where these images appear is controlled by the optional conditional indices values 0, 33, and 96 in this case. As you can probably guess, I'm prompting for it to be a spooky walk down a corridor. And that's kind of what it gives me in the generated video. Woo, yep. Keyframe support looking good. The final feature is extend. As the name suggests, you can extend your initial video generation beyond that five seconds. As before, we have a prompt and an input image. I'm asking for a rodent woman to appear wearing a tweed jacket and white blouse. The initial low res generation looks awesome to me. There she is stepping in and having a good old natter. The next section this time is extend. It's generating 120 frames in total now, rather than 97, allowing her to talk for a bit longer. However, moving to the final upscale is where things got fun again, as the longer video meant it went over 24 gig of VRAM. Yay, this made the final video go a bit weird once I changed the horizontal and vertical tiles. I got all sorts of little lines and things in there. So these settings do make it a bit better. I've got horizontal tiles three, overlap three, and, and that seems to be okay. I did also lower the noise a little bit through changing their custom sigmas there, and it is difficult to tell, but the first frame is a bit off. You, hopefully you maybe saw the little flicker there. That's the only mistake really in it, so I'd have to cut the first frame out. Other than that, the upscale's all right. Ooh, nerdy rodent. He really makes my day. Showing us AI in a really British way.